Tobacco use is the leading cause of lung cancer, but people who don't smoke can also be at risk. With us today to explain more about lung cancer screening and treatment options is Rachel Forehand, an oncology nurse with Baptist Healthcare. Hi Rachel, thank you so much for being here today. Thank you for having me. To get started, just share a little bit about yourself and your experience as an oncology nurse. Okay, um, I graduated here locally from Pensacola State College with my degree in nursing. Uh, yeah, I started <laughs> yeah. as a little tech on the ner oncology nursing floor at Baptist Hospital, and my entire career since then has been in oncology, and uh, it's a special place to work. It, it, you get real attached to your patients, very passionate about oncology and all the screening and prevention programs that we have nowadays. And we just ended October, which was Breast Cancer Awareness Month, which kind of takes over a lot of awareness for other cancers. Yes. Um, we're here to talk about lung cancer. Can you tell us a little bit about, you know, how common is lung cancer? Um, lung cancer is very common, actually. Uh, aside from breast cancer in women and prostate cancer in men, lung cancer is the second most common cancer. Wow. Yes, but what a lot of people don't know about lung cancer is it actually has the highest mortality rate. and it, it's, it's sad, but it, does, it doesn't get the same awareness all the time as breast cancer does, but it's very important in the fact that the awareness is getting better and better each day with lung cancer and the prevention and screening programs are as well. Right. And can you tell us a little bit about, you know, what are the risks with it? What are common factors that can put you at risk besides the obvious of smoking? Right. Like you said, the obvious definitely is smoking. That's the highest risk factor. The good thing about that one is it's one you can control. Mm -hmm. And there are tons of agencies and resources out there to help with smoking cessation if you are a current smoker. Other factors that contribute to it, though, are age. The average age of a lung cancer diagnosis patient is 70 years old. So age, smoking history, also secondhand smoke exposure, and exposure to carcinogens, wow. such as asbestos or arsenic. You know, that's a good point because I've noticed even when parents smoke around their children, so it can start as young as being a child, getting your secondhand smoke and affect you through life. Right, and when those little ones, when you know people smoke around kids, they may not realize they're actually increasing the chances for the children to have upper respiratory infections, asthma flare-ups, things of that nature. So aside from just the smoke exposure itself, they're causing, you know, you can cause acute illness right. to little ones with that. They're so sensitive, all their lungs are still developing and growing. I would just be way too paranoid to do that, <laughs> so I don't really understand how people do it. But why does lung cancer have such a high mortality rate? The main reason why cancer has such a, lung cancer in particular, has such a high mortality rate is because by the time individuals actually experience symptoms of lung cancer, it's at a much more advanced stage. You know, with breast cancer or other cancers, you may have signs or symptoms that trigger you to seek um, uh, seek a doctor's appointment much sooner than lung cancer. Lung cancer, by the time you start having the signs and symptoms, unfortunately, it's a more advanced stage of cancer that doesn't have a, you know, we get a much right. better chance of treating it at an earlier stage than a more advanced stage. And that's what makes lung screening so important because we're able to pick that up at a lower stage with less severity. That takes us into our next question. What are the <laughs> guidelines for individuals who want to get screened or any screenings? If you'd like to get screened, the best thing to do is talk to your primary care provider about it. They can go over all the risks and benefits that are associated mm -hmm. with lung cancer screening. But the main factors, the qualifying criteria at this time, are to be between the ages of 55 and 77, have a 30-pack year history of smoking, or if you've quit smoking, um, if you've quit within the past 15 years, that'll also qualify you. Now, there are some certain circumstances where if you don't have as high of a smoking history, but you have a family history of lung cancer, or you've had an occupational exposure in your life that increases your risk, then you still may qualify. So you would just go to your primary care physician for that? Yes, yes. So even if you're at your primary care physician and your other screenings come up, such as your colonoscopy, mm -hmm. you know, talk to them to see if a lung cancer screening is right for you. Now, one thing that I did not know about lung cancers, there are different types. Yes. Can you tell us a little bit about the different types? There are. Um, there are two main types of lung cancer. It's going to be non-small cell lung cancer and small cell lung cancer. And the main difference in the way 
in, in those two cancers is that non-small cell cancer takes up about 85 to 90 percent of the lung cancer diagnosis. But small cell lung cancer, it spreads much, much faster to other surrounding organs in the body than non-small non -small cell. And how does the type of cancer affect the different treatment options that are available? Well, not just with lung cancer, but with any type of cancer. It's commonly known that you've got surgery, chemotherapy, and radiation that are treatment options. And each cancer is individual. You know, we go by guidelines for treatment, but each cancer is individual to that person. If what type of cancer it is, how advanced the stage it's become as to what treatment options we pick. The exciting thing in oncology now is that there's new treatment options being added on, such as immunotherapy or target therapy that we can use, but it depends on the type of lung cancer and where it's spread in the person's body. It's truly incredible, you know, the advances in technology that we have that we're able to detect these things and treat them. Yes, yes, it's um, an exciting time. Secondhand smoke is extremely common, so what, you know, what are the risks with that? How dangerous is it? Is that something that we can control? Yes, uh, secondhand smoke, we're starting to learn more and more about that, but aside from causing, you know, being a risk factor for causing lung cancer, it can also cause many other health issues with your, you know, cardiac system, with your heart, it can increase your chance of strokes. There are so many reasons to try to seek help and to stop smoking if you're currently smoking. It's not just lung cancer, it's many other body systems throughout the body. And for those that are going through the treatment of lung cancer or they're a caregiver for someone that has lung cancer, yes. is there a place where they can receive support yes. in the area? There are a lot of resources. Um, at Baptist, we have a support group every second and fourth Tuesday. You can reach out to our Cancer Support Services Department and we can get you signed up for that and we'd love to have. It's, it's a good time mm -hmm. for the patient and the family to talk about what they're going through, talk about the hurdles that they're having throughout treatment and get support. It's very, very beneficial for everyone that attends that. Then there are also other resources through the American Cancer Society and other local agencies that offer support services as well. And we have some support um, groups that counts on aging. They're not smoking related, right. but I do know that everyone that's ever attended a support group, it's a little scary at first, but right. it's extremely beneficial. Yeah, getting up and going and taking that first step to get there is the biggest hurdle. Once you get there, you know, the just ha talking to somebody mm -hmm. who's been there and gone through that it seems to be very beneficial for the majority of our patients. And they can relate and they can probably tell you, okay, what do you need to do next? Right. So it's a real person instead of a doctor telling you Right, and what to expect. Certain things they went through that maybe they, they didn't know they were going to go through. Knowing what right. to expect is a, is a big portion of it. Well, Rachel, if anyone wants more information, where can they find that? You can give me a call. Um, my number is 850-469-7462. Um, our Cancer Support Services Department will be glad to set you up. And if you don't have a primary care physician, we can also help you in getting that and getting the order for lung screening if, if you're interested. Well, thank you so much for being here and giving us all of the information for Lung Screening 101. Thank you. We appreciate you being here. Thanks.